Hello, magandang araw, and welcome to your second lesson for History of Architecture 2. For today's topic, uh, we're going to be discussing Gothic architecture, which I've mentioned before, na tinalunan lang natin, tinaanan natin. The main difference is that Romanesque is more on uh, linear, geometric, and semicircles, while Gothic architecture is more on pointy. Now, we're gonna discuss that further on para hindi lang yun yung terms of reference nyo in terms of identifying kung gothic nga ba siya. Baka kasi automatic pag pointy siya, i-classify nyo siya as gothic. We're gonna delve more into the details and the differences of each one, okay? So, the images as seen on your screen, I've showed you this before. Recap lang tayo. The left image is more of Romanist because it's massive, it feels heavy, and it uh, resembles semicircular arches, while the image on your right is more of a Gothic style architecture because of its pointy arches, the trefoils, the tracery, which are details I will discuss further on today. Okay, so let's start. Gothic architecture uh, became prominent during the mid 12th century to 16th century. It's characterized by the overlaid tracery, which we will discuss later, and also as light, slender, and quote-unquote pointy. So, tracery. When you say tracery, these are bars or ribs of stonework that held the windows. So, it divides the openings into sections of various proportion by stone bars or ribs of molding. Pero most commonly, it refers to the stonework elements that support the glass in a window. Therefore, it's not only for aesthetic purposes, as you can see, pag tinitignan nyo yung images. Um, it's not just for aesthetic pur purposes, but also for a structural purpose that it supports the glass in the window. We'll discuss the parts of the Gothic window later on, but for now, um, Gothic architecture is characterized by tracery. Okay, one of the characterizations of Gothic architecture. Next, Gothic's main purpose or sense of um, achievement in terms of designing is to bring sunshine into people's lives and especially into their churches. I know this is very much the opposite of what your brain tells you in terms of Gothic. Kasi pag sinabing Goth, Gothic, you're thinking dark, uh, heavy, um, sad, and then medyo punk, ganyan. But, I will explain why this, uh, why, go why gothic minsan, yun ang kinokonote niya, pero hindi naman talaga dapat yun ang kinokonote niya or dinidrive niya in terms of gothic architecture. Gothic grew out of the Romanesque architectural style, when both prosperity and relative peace allowed for several centuries of cultural development and great building schemes. If we review further back, during the Romanesque, Romanesque time, I kept on repeating that the Romanesque era was more on salvaging and scavenging on the Roman remains, so they were making use of what was left behind. Gothic, on the other hand, the cities, the towns were progressive. They had education. These are uh, Gothic style is centuries worth of um, transitioning from Romanesque, Romanesque na nagi scavenge and salvage lang. So it is a time of enlightenment. Okay. This image is actually a Romanesque interior. I just place this here kasi para ma-feel nyo yung transition again from Romanesque style to the Gothic style. So, Romanesque again and again is characterized by semicircular arches. Okay? That is their main focus. The Gothic style, however, uh, focuses on pointed arches. The, the pointed arch is the most fundamental element of the Gothic style. Hence, laging sinasabi ng mga architectural digests and forums na pointy yung architecture ng Gothic. It is pointy because it relieves some of the thrust and stress on other structural elements. So with um, semicircular arches, ang nagbubuhat ng buong structure non ng, ng semicircular arches is the columns. But with pointy arches, 
we will discuss this later on, nagta-transfer yung load niya, it reduced the size of the columns or piers that supported the arch, making the structural elements slender and slimmer compared to that of the Romanesque era na interiors. So it's pointy, yes, but it also the 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 reason for it being pointy is that to give way to more slender and slimmer structural elements sa baba. Okay? Now, let's discuss further on the pointed arch vault. As I've said, is the distinguishing feature of Gothic architecture. However, we discuss uh, na the pointed arch vault was also used during the Romanesque era. Therefore, how can you properly identify just by looking at the vaulting, which is which, which era one structure came from? The diagonal ribs of a vault, as you can see to the left image, are the, from the word itself, diagonal, diagonal ribs. Uh, these are the ribs that run diagonal from the actual na pointed arch natin from the vault. So these are your diagonal ribs in 3D. These are your di diagonal ribs in highlighted na perspective. During the Gothic, during the Gothic era, nag move on ang architects from just having the plain old diagonal ribs to adding another member of the vault which was called which were called tierceron the tierceron is an intermediate rib that springs from the pier on each side of the main diagonal rib and therefore do not pass through the center of the vault now remember that the center of your vault is your main diagonal rib Therefore, ang tirsiron po ay ribs na nag-spring from the pier or uh, na-mention ko rin before, the pier is the, the conglomeration of columns, right? So, ang tirsiron po ay intermediate ribs or secondary ribs. Also, another addition to the vaulting system compared to the Romanesque during the Gothic is the Lierne. The Lierne is... Um, stands for to bind in French, which is if the tercerone is a secondary rib, the lierne is a tertiary rib. So, the lierne is a tertiary rib connecting the bosses and intersections of the principal ribs. So, ulitin ko po, kung ito yung tercerone na nag spring from the piers, your lierne are here. So, nandito siya connecting the bosses. The bosses are basically the flower flower things you see here, the intersections of the ribs. Okay? Moving on, ayan, yung boss, ayan po ang inyong bosses. The resulting construction is called a Lyrne Vault or Stellar Vault named after the star shape generated by connecting the lines. So in, in an RCP, in a reflected ceiling plan, this is your vault. The heavy lines denote your leerness. The circles denote your boss, bosses. These ones are your tirseron. Tama? Because ito, ito yung main na diagonal rib. Eh. This is one volt, for example. This is three volts. Eh. So, the middle volt, this is your main diagonal rib. The tirseron are the secondary ones coming from the pier na nakalinya from your diagonal. So, this is your diagonal. This is your tercerone. And then, yung nagko-connect and nag-form ng maliliit na star dyan sa gitna, that's the lirne. So, balik-balikan nyo lang yung images na to. Lirne, nasa gitnang part ng vault. And hindi siya necessarily secondary member, but a tertiary member. Tercerone, hindi siya yung diagonal member, pero uh, same siya ng tinatakbo. So, intermediate member siya. And diagonal ribs, siya yung pinaka-main na rib kung bakit nagkaroon ng vault in the first place. So, ito si diagonal rib. Si Tirsiron ay yung mga nandito. Si Lirne yung nandito na sa taas ng vault. Gets? So, pag tinignan mo ito sa right image, the, this is your main diagonal rib. Tama. Ayan. 
Next slide. In a real life scenario, this is what these architectural elements would look like. So the Gothic architecture um, developed more the vaulting system. So, kung from simple na diagonal rib at saka barrel vault, yung, yung simple lang na vaulting system ng Romanesque, the Gothic era designed their vaults intricately, as in this intricate. So, these are, these is the, these four are your diagonal ribs. Paulit-ulit kasi kailangan ma-differentiate nyo. These are your diagonal ribs. And then those baby ones are your secondary ribs, which are called terceron. And for this case, wala tayong, uh, what do you call this, leerness. But your leerness are these ones, connecting the bosses sa left image. Okay, gets? Another photo for appreciation purposes is this one. So this is, this employs both your tercerons and your leerness. So that's part of your vaulting system developed during the Gothic architecture. That's the main difference on how you can differentiate a Romanesque vaulting with Gothic vaulting. Okay, next slide. Any idea kung ano po ang tawag sa architectural feature na ite? This whole thing basically. So, if you answered flying buttress, then congratulations, you're correct. Wala pong, walang price, but, you know, self, ano, self-confidence. So, flying buttresses are also a flagship element of the Gothic style. These are, stru uh, the structural role of the flying buttress enables Gothic churches to give or reach the maximum heights above their naves. It transfers load to the space in between instead of the buttress itself. How do I say that? So, pag tinignan nyo, pag sinabi pong buttress, when you say buttress, for example, dito yung, ito yung main interior ng church, ang buttress is yung nakaprotrude na something na nakadikit dito. For, for this drawing, wala eh. Pero imagine nyo na lang, yung mga churches natin dito sa Pilipinas, mga old churches natin, di ba? May mak makakapal na columns or walls na nakaprotrude here. That's a buttress. A flying buttress, however, has space in between the yung talagang load carrying buttress niya. So, ito yung buttress na original na dapat nakadikit dito. Pero, with a flying buttress, nakahiwalay po yung buttress. Therefore, it's called flying buttress. It transfers load to the space in between instead of the buttress itself. So, yung load, instead na dito tumatapon, na itatapon niya palayo sa structure at saka pababa dun sa buttress na nakalayo dun sa structure. This is a detail of the forming, the formation of your uh, flying buttress. The inclination of a, the flyer, which is this one, the inclination of the flyer has a critical role in the transferring of loads kasi um, the steeper the flyer is, so mas mataas na inclination, inclination ng flyer, the more vertical load ang kaya niyang i-transfer. So imagine niyo na lang, if mas steep pa yung angle na yan, if gumanon, mas marami siyang load na natatransfer pa baba, making the structure mo more stable. So from the walls of the church, nagta-transfer yung bigat niya papunta dito sa flying buttress at saka pababa. In comparison to an ordinary buttress na nakadikit lang dito, ayan, a wall buttress. If my wall buttress dyan na nakadikit dyan, yes, it carries, it carries weight. However, the leaning of the building, for example, and other forces of nature na pwedeng mag-topple dun sa building, hindi niya kayang isupport. Not unless kapalan mo, tsaka gawin mong thicker yan, di ba? Therefore, the Gothic era developed the flying buttress para hindi ka lang may arcade at daanan sa ilalim. Meron ka pang additional, di ba, element na nagtatransfer ng load at the same time, magandang tignan. 
So this is another view of your flying buttress. As you can see, it makes the structure in a way, pag tinitignan mo siya, kala mo additional lang siya para mas maganda, mas cute. But in a way, it relieves the stress from the walls and the columns of the structure. Nagta-transfer siya ng load pa ulit-ulit tayo. But yun po ang purpose ng flying buttress. It, trans it is a buttress located away from the building, but it serves the same purpose as a buttress na nakadikit sa building. It just makes it more aesthetically pleasing and light. Diba? Because, after all, Gothic architecture is light. Okay? That's, uh, that's your flying buttress. Another architectural element you, uh, you can look at or you can identify a building na Gothic siya is with the presence of gargoyles. So, Gargoyle, gargoyle. The two main purposes were to scare off evil and to divert rainwater. As you can see, the open mouths and long necks dive. Ah, uh, kaya ginawang nakabukas yung mouth at saka longer yung necks o kaya medyo mas far away pa from the wall itself is to divert rainwater from building foundations because um, imagine nyo na lang, diba, the wall and then the foundation nandiyan sa baba niya. So, kaya long yung gargoyle is to divert rainwater palayo dun sa building yung tapon niya. So, two purposes of the gargoyle, war ward off, they were believed to ward off um, bad spirits, evil spirits, and to collect rainwater because, um, as you know, gutters are more of a modern or recent invention. So, they made use of the basic um, pan, uh, tapon ng tubig. That's why there are gar gargoyles. Okay? Going back sa discussion natin kanina, I said that traceries were one of the identifying features of Gothic architecture. Tracery, as I mentioned, are bars or ribs, stonework that held the windows. Pero himayin pa natin. A Gothic window um, ang typical na Gothic window can be divided into two sections. So, the lower section, the lower half, this part, this part, ayan, is usually comprised of two or more adjacent pointed arches. So, for this case, one, two, two pointed arches, one, two, one, two, um, for this case, for this one big giant window, as you can see, you have one, two, three, one, tinatamad ako magbilang, kunwari eight na lang, eight. And then this one has four. So that's the lower part. It can be comprised of multiple pointed arches or arches. The upper section, however, of a gothic window is filled with a foil. This is your foil, enclosed in a circle. Or some variation thereof. So, hindi necessarily na yung foil is enclosed by a circle. As you can see sa images here, there's a foil but not enclosed in a circle. For this one, there's a foil also enclosed in a circle. This one, there's a foil pero hindi circle yung enclosement niya. So, those are the two parts. The lower section and the upper section. So, it's basically a gothic window. It's divided into two parts. But I keep saying foil, pero ano po ba ang foil? A foil is the clover-like shape that features three or more leaves. So, si hidden Mickey, medyo hidden Mickey. Ayan. The foil is that carving. Yan o, yung parang flower dyan. Kaya, yan. Not necessarily na dapat flower siya na pabilog. But if pointy siya like this, it can also be called a foil. Okay, three foil denotes three leaves. Ibig sabihin, this for example has three um, leaves. Therefore, it's called three foil. Quatre foil, pag apat na siya, hanap tayo ng apat. Parang wala. Anyway, a cinque foil is one, two, three, four, five. Ayan, lima. One, two, three, four, five. Again, hindi necessarily na pag sinabing foil, three foil o kaya quatre foil, cinque foil, Hindi necessarily na pabilog siya. It can be pointy such as this one. So that is your foil. Now with all that I have discussed, would you st still say that this is Gothic architecture when I kept on repeating and showing you elements na light ang pumapasok? Mali na dinidenote nyo ang darkness in terms... Um, 
to refer to gothic. This is also gothic, but for you, it looks dark. This is also gothic, but for you, it looks dark. So, parang tinatanong nyo, hindi naman siya light, ma'am. Bakit siya? Bakit yun ang isang feature or description ng gothic that the purpose is to have sunshine in when yung mga buildings naman this is gothic this is gothic this is also gothic hindi siya hindi siya nagpo-portray ng light ganun now this is one side of history but um the goth or goths in plural is a Germanic tribe best known for sacking Rome in 14 CE. Therefore, they're one of the main causes of the fall of the Roman Empire. The Romans considered these people and anything connected with them to be barbaric, therefore dark and undesirable. But this is one side of the story because as we... Sorry, ako lang pala. Um, if you're familiar with the Goths, they're not actually barbaric and... Um, uncultured people. They were soldiers. They had um, a community. They had a government. However, during their time na nagseek sila ng help from Rome, hindi sila trinit as equally as they expected. Therefore, they plotted the, their revenge and led on to be one of the reasons why the Roman Empire fell. Gothic was used to describe the architecture of being barbaric. Uh, please uh, understand that the word Gothic architecture was used by the Renaissance people, Renaissance architect. So, hindi Gothic architecture yung tawag sa kanya habang Gothic architecture siya. Alam niyo yun, habang binibuild siya, hindi nila alam na Gothic architecture yung tawag dun. It wasn't labeled as Gothic, not until during the Renaissance because the Middle Ages were perceived as times of darkness and ignorance. As I've mentioned sa past lecture, it's called um, the Middle Ages were perceived as times of darkness and ignorance because we had no records of those era. So again, the association with barbarism. Sabi ng mga classical people, barbaric daw yung design na nag-flourish during, that, during the era na yun nga, na in-identify nila as goth, gothic architecture. So, ironic lang kasi during, as you can see, yung examples ko kanina, they were mostly for cathedrals, for churches. And they were letting light in. Pero yung mga classical peer people during the Renaissance era, they saw that as something na unacceptable and barbaric. Kaya, ni-relate nila sa mga sa goth people which is some which is dark and undesirable for the romans ha so for the romans they called it gothic architecture so yun po yung relation so it's not necessarily dark architecture it's just because yung mga people during the renaissance era they considered it as a way Parang they considered it as, as, at, as different from the classical era of the Roman and the Greek times. So, sabi nila, barbaric. So, ano ba bang reference nila with being, being barbaric? Since bitter sila with the goth tribe, they called it gothic. So, yun lang yung relation niya. Therefore, do not be confused because at the end of the day, the goal of gothic architecture was to preserve as much light as possible. So, yes, these buildings look may look dark to you, but during their prime, I'm very prime time, I'm very sure na um they were uh allowing light to enter more and they looked very uh flamboyant and majestic. Kasi isipin mo, from the normal na mababang ceilings, tinaasan ng ganyan during the archi- during the Gothic era architecture. Diba? So, that's one side of history. Again and again, Gothic, as a summary, is characterized by features that are pointy, slender, and tall. It's also um, characterized as ornate and intricate. It one of the main identifying features are its tracery and gargoyles. 
But if you look at writings, malalaman mo na gothic style siya if it has the redundancy of pointed arches, the presence of flying buttresses, and the ribbed vault. Okay? These are the three factors. You have your vault, a ribbed vault, more specifically, your tracery, and the evolution to the pointed arch. The exterior of one Gothic building, as you can see, if hindi yan na-maintain in terms of paglilinis ng stonework niya, if nagkaroon siya ng mold sa labas, then you can say, parang feeling mo dark siya. If wala, hindi siya na-maintain, hindi light yung color niya. But when you look at it, uh, ang ganda niya eh, in a sense, because ang focus is papasukin sa interior yung ilaw. And ang focus is that you feel like you're reaching for the heavens. In interior, this is a, sorry, this is a separate interior. This is Gothic architecture. Therefore, forget the notion, the meaning na na-built in sa mind nyo na Gothic is dark because Gothic is not. It is dark just because uh, some people labeled it as so because of being bitter of it being something new. Ganun naman ang tao, diba? If it's something new, they're scared of it. Therefore, it was called barbaric and something out of the blue. Kaya nila nirelate sa goth people. But at, at the end of the day, it's a reinvented kind of architecture picking up from yung, alam mo yun? Picking up from just using salvage parts of the Roman temples. It's a day of invention. It's a new era of invention. So that's Gothic architecture for you. It's very beautiful. So please, please, please do not deprive yourselves with this lecture. Mag-Google kayo, mag-search kayo with how Gothic architecture really looks like. Do not limit yourself to this lecture. Okay? With that, I thank you for listening, for sticking, it, for sticking with me. I try to keep my keep my lectures within 30 minutes so para lang ang tag dito kaya niyo siyang uh, pakinggan in one sitting. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I hope again na uh, makinig kayo with the future lessons because I do exert my time and effort with providing you such um lectures. Okay? Have a great semester again everyone and see you on the next video.